Hello there. Most of you probably know what I do and who I am for the most part, but for the rest I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Jansky and I am a somewhat popular Belt of Top Lane OTP. Before Belt release I mostly enjoy picks like Zed, Warwick or Volibear. I've been playing Dick since about Season 2 and I've been mostly Blad Hardstuck Top Lane main for the time being. My peak rank so far was Challenger, about 1200 LP in Season 13, but I only managed to finish a Master. At this point I'm sitting on over 700k Mastery points and about 1500 games played on Belveth and therefore I think it's time to actually make a Belveth top line guide. So here we go. I am the voice of the silence. Right, so the first thing we need to think about is why would you want to play Belt of Top in the first place? I mean, she's designed as a jungler, her entire passive is working mostly with jungle camps, not as well on lane. So why would you want to play her rather on top lane than a jungle? So first off, we'll start with the pros about Belt of Top. A uh, thing you can do as Belvoir, which I really like, is that you can fight most champions level 1, or at least take decent traits to chunk and blow, so you can maybe kill them on level 2 or level 3. Furthermore, you can invade enemy jungle. It doesn't always work, depending on matchup, but um, you might have a shot. Also, naturally, your kit carries sustain with the E, and um, you also have poke in lane, as well as decent wave clear with both W and Q. Also, you have really good roam potential if you get level 6 or if you have prior on lane, so you can do both. Another good aspect is that you have a pretty decent early game as well as a decent late game. I'm only saying decent um, because I'll get to that point later on, on the negative sides as well. Also, sitting on top lane, the camp that's closest to you is actually the Void camp, so Grubs and Herald. A thing you want to care about is that you don't instantly pick up your Void Coral for two reasons. For the first reason, your ult is dealing missing health to damage, so the lower the target is, the more damage it will deal. It will be pretty much an execute tool for at least one of the grabs. And for the second reason, you want to keep it as long as possible, so you don't want to waste it while still being on the grabs. You can also actually do grabs solo. Especially since you only need a single grab to get your form, you can just take one and leave afterwards. Turning to the downside of playing Belt of Top, obviously you can't invade enemy jungle to take camps. Also, some matchups are just straight up pretty unplayable, but we'll get to that later if I put up the matchup tier list. Another down point is that you can't utilize the good jungle clear. Belt of actually has a pretty decent jungle clear, but uh, well, if you don't jungle, you obviously could use it. Now, I'll get to the point I mentioned earlier about the solid early and solid late. Well, you have a solid early and a solid late, but you don't excel at either of both. So, you might win most matchups and most fights early on, because your early is not bad, but there are always champions that are going to beat you. Same goes for late game, you might be pretty strong, you might be pretty fat, but something like a Kassadin will usually just beat you. Happens. The probably greatest downside what people believe on Belt of Top is that you have hardly any passive stacks because you get 2 out of each kill and 1 out of each cannon minion, which is not that much if you count it up. So what I rather do than actually still build on it is that I change my playstyle towards a ability based Belt of rather than an on it based Belt of, but we'll get to that. Another point about Belt of in general, but I think Maybe a little more even about top lane Belveth is the snowballing part. And that is, Belveth is extremely polarizing and super volatile. So, if you go ahead in lane, you usually can stomp a game, carry a game by yourself to a certain degree. And if you go behind, it's really hard to play the game because, yeah, you're pretty useless. But, yeah, that's just part of the champion identity. So, I think you guys might have been wondering, what does he mean by ability-based Belveth instead of on it? Well, it's pretty simple actually. I will rather have a look at Belveth abilities and try to use them as much as possible, rather than the on it Belveth playstyle that you always see, like 20.0 attack speed Belveth OP, uh, look at those stacks, blah 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 blah, we don't do that. We just look at abilities and try to go for short comms, to win trades, win lane, one-shot people. 
starting with the runes. I used to run a lot of different uh, rune pages on Belveth, but right now I'm pretty much just defaulting at uh, Precision. And I'm running PTA because it's the best for laning, best for short trades, most damage. Out of the second, you can pretty much choose between Overheal and Triumph. I think Triumph is just the way to go. And most people would probably choose Alacrity here for Belveth. I actually don't like it that much. I prefer either like Tenacity and PC matchups or Legend Bloodline, so we're just gonna go with that for more lifesteal. Of these three, you can probably choose all of them in a way. I mean, Cutdown is good against tanks. If you don't have all that much HP. Last stand, if you want to try something with lifesteal, for example, or if you're just playing a little riskier. Or Coup de Gras, if you just wanna well, assassinate someone, finish them. I think we just default, default to go with Last Stand. And about those, I think Domination is probably the best if you want to play a damage spell with sudden impact, just most damage, short trades, you're gonna dash a lot, obviously. And um, yeah, on the rest, there's not that much you can actually go for. I think Genius Hunter, especially for a uh, uh, spell with any kind of Hydra and Eclipse will profit from it. Ultimate Hunter, just straight up useless. Relentless Hunter if you want to roam. Treasure Hunter if you want more gold. And uh, yeah, but I think choosing one of the Hunters is probably a good way to go. And a Genius Hunter will probably be it. And about the other runes, you can either way go double Adaptive Force, but I prefer to go for Ability Haste, just a little bit for lane. Pretty much do a lot of work. The other one damage, and I have a health for early game, scaling health or tenacity if you're running a matchup against some, a lot of CC. Yeah. So you can actually also run other runes. I used to do that earlier. I was running Glacial Augment against the ranged matchups, which sounds pretty spicy and it probably is, but they can't get away once you W them. Triple Tonic is generally pretty good, but you can well usually run Inspiration Second on Belva, which is problem about it, but you can use those levels pretty well. The second row is kind of useless, so I'm just picking Futures Market, and as for the last row, I've got Cosmic Insight or Approach Velocity, I think Cosmic Insight is probably better. And about the other ones, you can just probably default uh, Triumph Bloodline. As for the third rune page I'm going to talk about, it's just Tank Belveth, you pretty much default the first row on all of these. So just go grasp, demolish, conditioning, overgrowth, makes you tankier, makes you tankier, makes you tankier. And as for secondary, you probably just also run something like Triumph Tenacity, you don't really need lifesteal, but uh, yeah, if you want to be a little tankier, you can also default the little ones, so that's the way to go. Okay, finish the runes, let's get over to the item builds. So what I pretty much default they run in Bruiser Bellow build is also Doran's Blade start with health pots start with the default ward and upgrade later on, as per usual. I have uh, um, Mercury's or Steel Caps, I tend to prefer uh, Mercs, and the core build I'm running right now. So you can start building Stridebreaker in lane, it gives you a lot of power, especially in other laners as well. Or if you want to be spicy, you can also start Outbreak. It goes great with pushing, especially if you get an early lead, you can just extend it on map. Um, afterwards, Something you can build if you are ahead in lane is Bloodthirst. Uh, it grants you a lot of stats, grants you a lot of lifesteal, which makes laning great. Mm. In general, you can just heal up on wave, like heal half HP with 1 E if you have Bloodthirst finished. Then I tend to go for Shoujin, you get a lot more damage with the passive um, where you stack. And you can also use the Ability Haste. And the default last option would be something like Obolot's Blackmail, also for stats. Items I occasionally use at the moment are those ones, situational. Like if you play against a lot of armor, you build Cleaver, or if you are behind but your team is in a decent state, you can build this. Anti heal item. This one I build rarely, but it has some use cases. Um, the stats, it's. Oh, wait, I chose the wrong one. But uh, the stats it's giving are pretty. Decent, I'd say, so you can probably leave it in as it is one. So, yeah. Um, some item I really like to build right now is Mercurial Scimitar, because the core stats it's giving you are alright ish. I mean, 10% lifesteal, 50 MR, 40 80. It's pretty expensive, but it has some use cases. Um, more 
also a decent item in terms of stats gives you a lot of shield a lot of damage as well ga if you need some armor some defensive options here but i usually tend to build these items or sometimes i put this one in a little addition about this fellow because it's crit item and it doesn't come up here just quick explanation i know it's probably the best crit item or one of the best crit items on battle buff but whenever i build this item i lose i straight up lose i don't deal damage and i lose and i don't like that so i don't build it getting to the last of the builds i usually run or ran uh, is tank bell you run tank bell with grasp and the start and the boots are pretty much the same the item build is a little different though well yeah obviously it's tank so i think you can start with titanic hydra i think it's better to start not the wife and the other one uh, with hard steel though so you can stack early you can kind of survive lane it's really annoying to last it with no ad though but uh, if you play it a little bit you manage and you actually to make your tanky out of the situational items, I mean, I have not been really trying tank bell too much lately, so I think one of these two could be pretty sweet. And uh, Hellbreaker, well, I used to build it because it gave you like 60 to 70 resistances, so we were just default tanky with building all the HP in this. Um, but yeah, I think the default build would probably look something like this, and maybe that. Something like that, I think, would be pretty defaultish. But yeah, that much about the builds. Let's advance to the next point. As for sums, I usually just run flash teleport. If you want to be spicy, you can run barrier, but this uh, teleport is usually just the best. And about the skill order, I start with Q level one. You can take good traits with it, especially with something like A. Uh, afterwards, level two, you go W because it grants you kill pressure. Level E, so you have every ability is good once. I max W because poking a lane grants you a lot of value. It is probably the best ability to max for lane because you have lower cooldown, higher damage, longer slow duration, pretty much uh, what you want. Afterwards I max E for the extra damage reduction. The damage itself is not relevant and the cooldown itself is also not too relevant sadly. And I go Q last because um, I feel like you don't need it all that much in lane. I mean, you get minion damage, which is pretty cool. You get a little bit of CDR and you get a little bit of damage, but I think uh, W and E have more value. Advancing to gameplay. Elduff has a really, really strong level one, especially if you're running runes like PTA. So you can trap people early on or take skirmishes. But you have to take care, you can't trap everyone. You have to be careful of champions like Darius or Older or champions that run Ghost, maybe Tron as well. Because you don't beat them level 1, so you might as well just not even try to trap them. You won't get away once you engage on them. Right, after all the theoreticals, let's get straight into gameplay. Usually I start games off with late invading at about 130, so I'm at the enemy blue buff. If I see enemy junglers on it, I fight them, else I just drop a ward so I have some intel. I'll just let this clip run once and then I'll slow it down so we can explain why I'm doing it, what I'm doing. First you try to hit your target directly so you get a PTA stack, then you cancel your auto attack with your Q animation and do the same thing again. So you have a pretty good trade, you have practically 5 hits in a time where your opponent gets hits like once or twice. In the meantime, as you can see, I've been taking down most of the minions though I didn't get to last at them. I'm pushing the wave and I get early dub too. Try to keep as many dashes as possible, while you get your level 2, you can dash offensively, use your W to follow up, get a really good trade, or if your opponent drops low, you can even get a kill, especially if you use something like flash. However, as it is really important to keep at least one dash, or maybe two, uh, to get away from your opponent, unless you can fight them and kill them. You don't really have that much damage with both dashes or abilities, so you just want to take care and not do something like this. So. First you try to initiate with W, if you don't miss that you should probably back off or try to trade with Qs. Use your E to get um, damage reduction if your opponent would strike you or to deal some damage. And afterwards you can back out or if you're jungler, you can't like in this play, you can just go back in and get the kill. I just call this something like a hit and run playstyle. 
the way I play Bell usually sums up pretty easily, and that is that you want chaos. You want chaos to happen on the map, so you can go havoc, that you can fight, you can skirmish. That's what you want on Bell buff. And the two main playstyles, like damage and bruiser, don't differ too much later on. Um, as for one is just more one shotty and the other one is more consistent and you are a little tankier not a one shot yourself. So before I get into the more specific mechanics in Belveth I'll just quickly show you guys the matchup tier list. Um, some of these are probably pretty easy to understand, for others I might have some other idea why they're good or bad but because of time I'll just keep it short for now. If you guys want a matchup tier list with me explaining why just let me know in, like down below or some in some way. And um, yeah, for now I'll just start with the mechanics that I know on Belveth, but I don't really use them often and I'll tell you why. Starting with double dashing. Double dashing works in a pretty simple way. The moment you would get a single Q up and you have no other Qs ready, if you hit your W, you can dash twice in a row, as you can see here. I don't really use it often because I don't feel like it has enough benefits for me, and so I've never even like really bother too much to pick it up. So if I double dash it's usually by accident, it's not on purpose, though it might have some use cases to learn it. Something you can do if you stay long enough while leashing a jungler, you can get a stack wave passive. But I don't think it's actually worth it. You should rather get lane prior or trap your opponent. Some junglers can be bold if it's worth like Sejuani maybe, but um, I'll get to that point later. I'm going to explain the next uh, point which I don't really use just by showing this clip from uh, the guy himself where I was playing against him a while back and he was very surprised about belt of proxying um, so you can kind of push the tower with only void links but there's one big downside to it they don't reduce the tower armor so you deal a third of the damage so pushing tower with only void links not necessarily it so in certain situations I also do it obviously if the turbo is low HP or if I can get a plating that way. Jumping straight from mechanics I don't often use to mechanics that I often use at the moment. If you spectate my clips you'll see there's a lot. I'm cancelling alt attacks with my Q a lot. Especially since Bell of Q has a very generous hitbox you can use it for easy trades and yeah that's a pretty core part of the kit. Something else I do very often on Bell is pressing Q flash. It works like on Sejuani or on Jarvan, but you deal the damage of your dash, which can be very significant to win fights. Especially since you can dash in another direction and flash backwards to deal the damage of a dash you else wouldn't be able to. So if you want to minimize the fun for your lane opponent, something you can always do is proxying. Especially if you're ahead, early on works even better. So let's say you're level 3 and your lane opponent died two times or one time and he doesn't have TP anymore. He's coming back to his lane and what you do is proxy the wave. If your opponent is coming in, you kill him. You're stronger. Belveth can utilize level lead very, very well. You can also call your jungler over. If he listens, that's great for you. If he doesn't, it's okay. Because you only return to a tower to get plates. You bully your lane opponent, you walk back really quick, hit the tower once or twice, get a plating and you walk right back at your opponent. Quite a central part of playing Bell of top lane is that you get to push. So you want to push on side lane, you want to push your lane, you want to get your tower as early as possible, as many plates as possible. So uh, to optimize pushing, you can use your Qs, like towards walls or through the tower, to cancel auto attacks. And um, you should also build Heartbreaker sooner or later if you can afford it, because it greatly enhances your pushing power. Getting to some fun facts and bugs that I've noticed while playing Bell of. Also, since some of you guys asked me why would I build Ability Ace instead of Attack Speed on Belveth, uh, shouldn't it be useless on the Q? It only scales with Attack Speed, so here's my point. Yes, the Q cooldown is scaling with Attack Speed, but the Ability Ace is still good because it decreases the time between dashes. You can dash more often and you can very well just use it on W and E as well. So there's been a bug with Belveth ult true form with the Void form for quite a while. So, as you guys know, you get minions spawned from your own minions and from enemy minions if they die while you're nearby them and if you have the true form. However, if you get a kill or assist, if you pick up the form, you do not get any minions for the first few seconds 
I just realized this clip, I have not seen that before, that it's even more bugged than I thought. It's not even consistent. So I got two out of three from these ca caster minions as void minions, but none of the others. And that doesn't make any sense to me. As for this one, I can imagine it being a feature. So if a void minion of yours last hits, it doesn't grant you a cult stack. Getting to bug that's actually beneficial for Belveth, and that is since the void grubs came in. If they die near the tower and you have your true form, they turn into void minions. Also, I'm not gonna take this into detail, but with the new flicker blade, quick blades has still not been fixed for Belveth, so it's not a good choice in my opinion. So, quick question, which champion does Bell of Pack regularly with? That's right, Sejuani. Sejuani Bell is an incredibly strong combination and I forced a friend of mine named Krito to play a few games with it, so I get some clips for this video to show you guys how OP it is. And if you have a duo as Bell of top lane player, you might really want to try this. So what are the main strengths and weaknesses of this playstyle? Sejuani is really good at um, invading together with other champions such as Belveth because Belveth can easily stack and you can just throw ease at enemies as you saw as we want with the Volibear, Bear and uh, as we apply pressure on the enemy. Also Belveth Sejuani is incredibly fast at clearing first jungle camp so that's one of the few matchups where I say okay I'm gonna help you in jungle because we just one shot the buff straight up and just give Sejuani a lot of time. For example to move top lane for a level 1 gank, having either skilled Q or W, I personally think Q is better. To all in your lane opponent and force him to flash or lose a whole lot of HP. In addition to that, Bell of Sejuani also just straight up one shot grubs. So you can get these real quick, you can go back to your lane real quick and apply more pressure. But enough of this for now. Let us advance to the final point in my guide. The point you have all been waiting for. Drums, please. Early on, since plating is rebuffed, there's not too much you can do. You can get a little attention from your jungle, but it won't do anything too much. If you want to be ahead, that's great, but you don't necessarily need it. The game starts at minute 6 for you. Minute 6 is where the rubs come up, the first ones. You want your level 6, and those are what you want to play for sure. So, uh, you move. Obviously, if you want to get them, you ask your jungler and your support, and maybe even your mid laner to move over as well. Your ADC tries to stay safe if possible. If enemy jungler is there, and enemy mid laner as well, top laner, they could be support as well, but you try to fight it. If you get at least one of them, you're good. If you get all three, even better. So this is where the game starts. Ideally, you ask your jungler to dive enemy top laner, which you can most likely do if you have a stacked wave, and you get as many plates as possible. If you don't get the tower in first try, you will just come again and will get the tower sooner or later. This usually takes me around 8 to 10 minutes. If you have a huge wave, you can go for the other turrets, L to just back. And this is the, the Jansky special, you rotate your bot lane to mid, send your mid lane top, and you go bot lane yourself. At this point, you are very goal accelerated and you can probably even 1v2 if the enemy jungler is not there, L to just ask your own jungler to be there. If you beat them, what you do is you take plates. A huge part of this is going demolish. If it would happen to take a little longer than you expected to take top turrets, you stay top, obviously, a little longer, get second grubs, which makes pushing even more effective. Else you ask your jungler to take grubs, and you just stay bot. If you do manage to take down bot line turrets, the map is just entirely split open. You will be sitting on two items, if not even more, as all enemies are maybe on one item. So the first move we're pulling is pretty much as I hit level 6, just a little time before it's minute 6 and grabs come up, we just kill the enemy top laner, knowing that grabs are gonna come up and we wanna play grabs, so I shove the wave, I prepared the wave to hard shove it in um, the tower so they can't move or they will lose a lot if they move, we kill set so it doesn't really matter, brand can't really move, brand can't really contest it, so we pick up the first grabs and this is pretty much how you get them as fast as possible. You use your E, for example, to get Sejuani stacks, and you keep the Void Coral as long as possible. It's 10 seconds of the maximum timer. This is how I usually just get plates with my Demolish, and with the Void Grubs, trying to utilize them as good as possible. So even if you take a little damage, you can just heal back up and poke your lane opponent. So if your jungler comes by, you can probably just dive him, finish him off, and this is where 
the real belt of top gets started. Usually after taking like two or three plates you have to go, maybe you can't even get all that much, but now I'd have four plates which would be great, I would have my Hullbreak hand base, but if you have a jungler that pays a lot of attention to you, you can maybe even go for more, just like this, and uh, try to take the entire turrets, even if your lane opponent manages to move in, the tower is so low, you still have a huge void wave, you don't really lose any minions here, and once the tower is gone, your opponent made a fatal mistake, you can just straight up kill him again, so that's what you do. And having a huge wave stacked, you can even consider to go further. Usually I would just back here, but um, knowing that my lane opponent isn't here, I have about 20 minions, I can just straight up go on put next to it. While your lane opponent isn't here, you obviously want to hit the turret as much as possible and also chunk the minions a little bit. And even if you're very much stronger, you don't want to always confront your lane opponents. So what I do is usually I just pick the wave, hit the tower every now and then for the void buff. And um, yeah, if I can finish it, I might as well just do. Trying to avoid a fight with sets like an all-in fight because you don't need to throw your void farm, it's unnecessary. I was taking pretty much risk here that I didn't have to by also Overstaying, almost dying to set Ignite, almost dying to set W, almost dying to uh, the Azir. So um, it was unnecessary to drop my flash here. However, so it's minute 10. We got three people top, so my team can also put a pressure on the map. The next Void Grubs are coming up. That's also a huge advantage if you take them early. They come up early again. So I just rush the Void Grubs and um, take the top wave. So we have some more pressure top. It's going to be a huge wave again and then I'm going to rotate towards bot lane. Being almost two levels up and almost one entire item in terms of gold accelerated, uh, you can just pick about any fight, you would win most of them, especially if you have your team with you. So if you get the kill on enemy ADC, support can't really do much, and you just start on picking on bot lane tower as well. Having decided to go Heartbreaker first here, you have obviously a lot more tower damage. The other options would probably be something like Stridebreaker or even Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster as a first item can be pretty strong, especially if you're ahead because there's not really much of a way for you to die. Your E is going to heal you about half your HP, but as you can see, Heartbreaker is just giving me a lot of pushing power. And even if I can't kill the Nami here, I'm just pushing the next wave. I'm going to recall with about 3k gold and the game is pretty much over for them. They lost 5 turrets within 12 minutes and um, there's not much they can do to come back here. Just to put it into perspective, I'm sitting on about two and a half items with boots finished. That's about eight and a half K gold here, while enemies are on about three to four K gold. Like my ad teammates are on five K gold. So I'm super fed and yeah, they just have F at this point. There's really nothing they can do about it. And this is how Belt of Top works. So. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this, perhaps even learned something, and maybe even some of you considered to play Battle of Top now. But now, let me say thank you for watching, as per usual. If there's anything you're still wondering about, just ask. If I missed something, let me know, so I might cover it in another video, but um, as for now, have a good time, be nice to each other, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye then, bye bye.